I think for me, it has to be orchestral in, I guess, any of its forms, but um, I'm really into that. That kind of sound that John Williams brought around in Star Wars, using the symphonic kind of ensemble to its limits. Um, and that works really well because I, I score a lot of animation. Um, so it fits really nicely because scores for animation back in like the 30s and 40s were kind of jazz influenced. So you see a lot of that kind of popping up in, in my animated scores, this kind of jazz orchestral hybrid. And I think the orchestra's got a lot of, um, it's got a huge range of like colours musically. Sound wise, it goes right from the bottom right to the top. Um, so yeah, you can be creative with it, but there's kind of that nice, there's a nice form to it as well. And people expect to hear certain things. And I like playing with those expectations. I love analog synths and I love the kind of sound of like the eighties, like Giorgio Moroder, like the Scarface score and stuff like that, that came back recently with like Stranger Things. I'm really into that as well because it's very, um, it, it, in the same way, there's a huge range. Obviously, synthesizers, you can create pretty much anything uh, from scratch, sound-wise. I also like, again, the expectations that people have of that music. Um, and there's nothing better with both orchestral and synth music of just creating something cool that people notice and recognise and enjoy. So yeah, I, ju I just love messing around with those kind of worlds um, and, and anything in between. But when I first started in 2014, I think, yeah, 2014, I kind of, um, I joined this thing called Patreon. You know Patreon, do you? Like where you kind of, it's where you donate to like uh, an artist like per month. I don't even know how it works these days, but back then, you could give them like $10 a month, which is like seven pounds. And, um, and you could, in some cases, um, get to talk to them and meet them and hang out in like Skype and stuff. Cause we didn't have like discord and stuff, but then it was, you know, obviously Skype. I started doing it with a couple of people and just kind of like meeting people. Um, and I was at uni at the time and writing film music, obviously. And then after about six months or so, I started to branch out with a couple of friends who'd also been in those groups. And um, that formed the beginning of like my network when it comes to YouTube work. And then six months down the line, you show them a bit of music and they go, I actually didn't know you were a composer. Um, let's work together. And just building on it from there. Um, and then I got a job editing this podcast uh, called Sleepy Cast, which John uh, John Tron was on with John. Um, it was 2019 and he was doing this animated, uh, episode. I've got a good friend, Lewis, who, uh, put me in touch with him and John, uh, must've heard that I'd, well, he heard my music and then I kind of said, Oh, by the way, I worked on your episode of sleepy cast back in the day. That episode kind of, went on and while that was in production there was another one and he asked if I could do some original music for that um so that was that's a really nice working relationship I mean you know um it's it, those episodes they go out to a lot of people and so it's really nice challenge like a quality check being like make sure it's good you know obviously everything should be good but like really make sure it's good in this case um the music he asks for is quite weird and 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 uh, you know, unique in a lot of places, and that really matches with me. It's almost like writing game soundtracks sometimes. People will send over when they want something. They want something composed. They'll send over references, and maybe they won't. Um, but let's say they do. Then in that case, I'll you know, and the references are a piece of music, preferably like multiple, but one is fine. Um, and you've got to extra extrapolate from that what they want and you've got to read into what they've said to you when you've called or when what they've typed to you and just extract all that information and try and piece together exactly what it is what they want off that let's say i get a cartoon through i will um download off youtube whatever the music they've sent and then i'll go through another a few things that i think that i think are related to it in the genre 
maybe they want some like anime music. Well, I would look up a things that sound like that soundtrack, what they've sent, but also other animes. And um, I'll just listen to it. For, maybe I'll go on a walk and just put a Spotify place here and just listen to it and absorb it. Depending on how specific they've been about where they want things, I'll drag in like those tracks onto Cubase, what I work in. Um, and use make my own little temp track, you know, like temp music. I'll make my own, just so I'm comfortable with where things are going to occur. Um, because it's better to do that, I find, than write a load of stuff that doesn't work. Because then you might have wasted a bit of time, and you're on limited time. I might spend a little bit of time just by myself at the piano, coming up with a little theme or melody, and then some chords around it, and then I'll write it all in, and then um orchestrate it and orchestrate as I go, you know, dragging, copying and pasting little bits, sending them off to different um, plugins for different orchestral sounds um, or synths. So yeah, that's, that's my process. Just listen, take it into your ear, play a few ideas, make sure that the thing, once you've constructed your temp track is, is well structured. And then really all you're taking is the information you've written, the musical information you've written at the piano and just transplanting it into the score and dialing it back where it needs to be dialed back and forcing it when it needs to be forced. So yeah, um, that's how I, how I get around it, but going very quickly. I really like um, Murray Gold because of his Doctor Who work and other things. But the Doctor Who scores from like, you know, 2007 to when he finished like 10 years later you know in terms of his approach to kind of style and bringing in all sorts of different influences and but also having this like symphonic jazz um approach which is also thanks to his um, orchestrator ben foster I, I love that pair and, and what they did for, for doctor who and i think like that was a that was a really uh, big inspiration for me. And because his work on that show was like for such a long time, it was coming out new each year as I was growing up and going to uni and like learning how to write music and stuff. So it was a good instruction manual on, on how to write themes 